All bad. It's the seventh month in a row that inflation keeps going higher. For more on the inflationary pressures being felt across the globe, we bring in our friend Anthony Chen and former chief economist J.P. Morgan Chase. Anthony, we've talked about this before. We've seen the Fed rate hike. We had 75 basis points. Looks like they're going to do another 50, 75 potentially in July. Is the Fed ahead of the game or is the Fed behind the game at this point? Phil, the uh, Federal Reserve is still trying to catch up, and that's one of the reasons why they're reluctant uh, to even pause or even consider lowering interest rates, because they have to convince the financial markets that they are serious about inflation. And to convince them, uh, they may have to overshoot and perhaps even raise rates a little bit more than they need to. How much more do they have to go? Oh, I think that uh, we still need to see the federal funds rate uh, approach somewhere uh, in the neighborhood of three and a half to as much as four uh, percent. And then, of course, they'll be looking at the data. And if inflation is not making sufficient progress, then they'll go further. But I'd say right now, with everything we know, three and a half to four percent as a terminal Fed funds rate, I think is reasonable. So, I mean, we talk a lot about rates, but let's assume I don't know anything about economics, right? You're the expert. And I look at this and I go, okay, well, the U.S. is raising rates to fight inflation. I'm assuming that pretty much all other countries are doing the exact same thing. Is it helpful that they're all doing the exact same thing? Well, remember that when you raise interest rates, uh, you dampen uh, aggregate demand. And that's what the problem uh, that we have, that demand is exceeding supply. In order to solve that problem, Phil, we could either increase supply, but central banks have no control over that, or they can dampen or reduce uh, demand, which is what they have some control over, and that's exactly uh, what they're doing. But keep in mind, we complain that inflation is, is serious, and it is. Uh, when you look at in the consumer price index compared to where it was before the pandemic, we're up 4.3 times on the inflation rate. But you go to countries like Israel, uh, the inflation rate is up 25 times what it was before the pre-pandemic and Italy 20 times higher. So, uh, and as you mentioned earlier, uh, Turkey with an inflation rate of 73 and a half percent. So these are other countries that also have problems, but they're much bigger than ours. Uh, and so when I look at a country that has an inflation rate that's 25 X what it was before the pandemic, I say that's a lot more serious than the problems we have here in the United States. Let me ask you this from a, as a, as a, from a stock market perspective, right? So inflation means higher prices. And again, as a regular person, I translate that into if I can charge higher prices for my goods, that means I could make more money as a, as a company, perhaps. Is it necessarily a bad thing for the stock market? Well, it is a bad thing for the stock market if somehow these companies cannot increase the prices sufficiently to cover their costs. And by cost, I mean transportation, I mean labor, other types of raw material. We know that early during the pandemic when people were uh, very uh, excited about spending money because we locked up the economy, we gave people money, but they had very few things to spend it on, uh, they were willing to pay more. But as you can see more recently, so with some of the experience of some of the retailers like the Walmarts, the Targets of the world, uh, there's some backlash and there's some hesitation on the part of consumers. So raising prices, but not raising prices sufficiently to cover all your costs is not necessarily good for the stock market. And you've seen some of that being reflected in the equity market. Some of the concern that even though profit margins have held up, they may not hold up indefinitely as some of that pricing power will go away. A a Anthony, um, if you were in charge of the the global economy, and there was a global Fed chair, and, and, and that was you, how would you fix this inflationary issue? Well, I think uh, what Fed Chair Powell is doing uh, is, is certainly the right thing. The question is whether he'll do it aggressively or not. And what I would do uh, along those lines is to dampen demand to allow supply to catch up, because supply is catching up. You're starting to see inventory to sales ratios uh, starting to go up, particularly in retail, and you're going to see it in other areas. Raising interest rates also is already having an impact on the interest-sensitive sector, specifically housing. You've seen that housing sales, whether it be new homes or existing homes, 
uh, they basically are slowing down. And there's one area that I think is of real particular interest, and that is when you look at houses that are in construction right now, they are now at the highest level since 2006. So we are seeing that the market works and that these high prices are generating increased supply. It's taking a little bit longer. Obviously, the conflict with uh, Russia and Ukraine is having a problem, given the fact that 30 percent of the wheat comes from there. So as that issue is resolved, again, more supply. I think over time, we're going to see more supply. And if we dampen demand as a temporary measure until supply catches up, we will be able to make progress and uh, and see that inflationary pressures will ease. Very quickly, no very quickly, Anthony, would you say that a, a light recession is actually good for the global economy in the long run? I think uh, any recession is not a great thing, but it may be a, a reasonable trade-off to get rid of this inflation. Because if we don't and we let it get out of control like 1979 uh, to 1981, you saw that we really had to hammer the economy with super high rates. We don't want to do that. All right. Uh, let's leave it at that. Uh, Anthony Chen, always good to see you and uh, have your analysis on this. Thank you very much.